Bravo, en fait. As you can see in here, uh, this is where the gilts are, and there, there is grass. Uh, it's not lush and overgrown, but it is grass, and they do graze on it, and it's still good. They get plenty, but I'm thinking about giving, giving them just a little bit extra and running uh, some cattle, or cattle, hog panel from like this part of the fence over to that part of the fence just to give them this little area right here of extra grass because uh, I'll open up this gate right here and just let them come in. Uh, the rest of the area that I'm blocking off over here is where the goats are, Meadow and, and her kid and Jojo. Uh, and there's plenty of grass and weeds in there for them to pasture on. So cutting off this little back part here isn't going to be a big issue. And I can always leave a gate open for the goats to come out here uh, if I, if I need to. So that is my next project. I got two uh, hog panels right here laying here ready. I need to get two more and uh, we'll get it up. I think I have a little friend on my leg. Oh, where is it? Where'd it go? Yep. Well, hello cat. How are you? I saw one of your, uh, your conquest just a second ago <clears throat> i walked by a dead mouse good job man i don't know if it's because it's been such a wet spring i mean it has been wet and this weekend it rained both days again and there's flooding and everything else great for making the pasture luscious and green but there are a ton of ticks i mean I know this sounds gross, but we'll find them crawling on us all the time. I hate those guys. That is exactly why I have five guineas that I'm raising up to turn loose on the yard. We'll see what they can do for me. I have heard they are little miracle workers but when it comes to ticks. We'll find out, huh? What's up? Carpenter? Where are you? What's going on there, buddy? Hey, what's going on, huh? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Meadow, what's going on? Probably need to brush some of that winter coat off. And there's the two youngins. Always together. All right, Piggly Wigglies. Ready for some breakfast? Here they are. <laughs> Ready? Fake them out on one side and go to the other. And here we go. And this one will go back and forth for a second. Mm hmm. And there we go. All right. Always hungry. I feed the goats hay all through the winter and through the spring until the weeds and growth are at least chest high on them and then I pretty much cut off the hay and you can see they're in there eating away on what's growing so they're getting a good meal in there and they do it every day so they're getting good greenery it cuts down on, on the food uh, price for the month uh, I also don't give them as much grain uh, one I don't know, a cup full at night. Uh, it seems to be doing the trick. They get it plenty, but they're just grazing all day long. And that's what goats are supposed to do, isn't it? You can see Big Mama out there grazing. 
There's plenty of good grass out there. Okay, the reason why I give the uh, bucks a flake of hay and not the, the does is because they have a smaller pen. They still graze in here, but they graze it enough to keep it down and they like to graze or browse higher stuff, you know, weeds and grasses that are tall. And frankly, it's not as healthy for them to graze low because that is where the parasites concentrate is lower towards the ground so i have to be careful it's not dirt down to the dirt but it is low so i give them uh, a flake of hay to complement their their grazing time but it is doing what it's supposed to do and they are healthy so i am keeping an eye on them but that is why they get their flake of hay a boy was at a carnival and went to a booth where a man said to him, if I write your exact weight on this piece of paper, you will have to give me $50. If I can't do that, then I will give you $50. The boy looked around and saw there was no scales, so he agrees, thinking that no matter what the carny writes, he will just say he weighs more or less and win the $50. In the end, the boy ended up having to pay the man $50. How did the man win the bet? Answer coming up. So the chickens that are with the bucks, these guys right here, I try to get every day, give them a uh, bit of scratch. This is just corn. I uh, to give them a variety out there. But they fend for themselves. I uh, eat the bugs and worms and plant life that they can and they're they're perfectly fine. They lay eggs in the buck pen in the buck stall. Alright, so I just spread a little bit as I walk and they follow me around and eat it up. Don't you? <laughs> so I just walk around spreading it all over this pen pasture. And if they follow me, they don't stay. They don't stay where, where it was. They keep coming. <laughs> so it gives them a little variety. It gives them a little bit of fun out here. Finding these little snacks. What's up, pigs? What's going on? Hey, do you guys like corn? Let's try that. There you go. What do you think? They might like some of that. <laughs> okay, I don't know what part of the country you all live in, and I don't even know if this is nationwide. I, I have no idea. But have you ever walked by um, some weeds or grass and you see what looks like maybe some person or some animal spit and it's just hanging off that plant? Well, that is a type of insect that does that. It looks like uh, that right there, this white stuff. It looks like uh, someone spit on that plant It's just hanging off of it. And I'm gonna show you what's in there. That is called a spittle bug. Uh, also a frog hopper, if I'm not mistaken, because they're real teeny tiny bugs when they're mature and they can jump many, many, many times their body length. That's why they're called frog hoppers. But when they're in their larva stage, they protect themselves with that white spittle looking stuff. And I'm gonna show you what's inside it. You ready? Here's that plant I just showed you with this white stuff on it. And it, get that spider off. And it acts and looks just like spit. Let's get these leaves out of the way so I can show you what I got in there. I don't want to hang on that. Sometimes they'll come up with this leaf, so hold on a minute. I'll find it if it went down there. Oh, there it is. There's one, right? 
there that is what is making that oh it fell it's right there maybe I can zoom in on it I don't know if I can it's wiggling around right there you see it in there okay so it protects itself by putting that spittle all around it and uh, nobody bothers it except me of course and there's crawling now. It was. Come on, guy. Come on. He doesn't know what to do without all that stuff around him. When we first moved in this, into this house um, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, there was no patio here, obviously. But I framed in a place and went to our creek and got these rocks that were in the creek and try to make a patio here, patio here it looked good for a minute and I bought I can't no I don't know if you can see that this plant right here to spread out all over the place so that uh, we can walk on it oh here's a better example right here see that looks cool does these little purple blooms but it just didn't fill in like I thought it should and I can't keep up with all these weeds, I mean, you, it's, it's constant job. So what I'm gonna have to do is just kill everything and go back just to the stone. I wanted it to look mossy and cool like that, but it's actually in too much sun. So everything else grows in it too, and I gotta just see what happens. I've never killed everything on it before, so we'll see what it looks like. Also, I have to trim some of this honeysuckle back because it's getting a little bit out of control. Look how that's filled in, it's pretty cool, huh? It's beautiful. Take a nap. I'm just walking around. <laughs> Big girl. On Friday, uh, I have a veterinarian farm vet actually come out here and she's going to check out all my animals uh, goats, pigs, chickens, guineas. Just give them a once over. I would recommend if you have any kind of livestock uh, that you get a good relationship with a farm vet um, I hear that nationwide it's gonna be well you won't be able to get antibiotics without a prescription for your animals uh, we were able to until I think next year and it will have to come through your vet so there's not many vets that will actually do farm visits or they won't look at particular animals like uh, there's some that won't look at goats or someone that, that won't look at pigs. I have one that fortunately uh, That's how she makes her living going farm to farm and she will take care of all of those animals So it's a good it's a reassurance. It's a good thing to have uh, Knowing that uh, I've called her up several times and said my ghost doing this. What should I do? She has prescribed medication uh, over the phone and she actually lives close by just a couple miles up the road so I can go to her house and uh, and get the prescribed medication whenever she does that I find it super convenient and super helpful and I, it gives me a great peace of mind knowing that she is available and that she uh, will come out and take care of my farm so if you have one uh, get a relationship because I also hear they're hard to find meaning uh, distance wise uh, I've heard a lot of people say the nearest 
farm vet I can find is two hours away. You know, somebody help me. And, you know, you feel for them. You don't know what to do for them. But um, they are out there. You just have to search. Uh, put out some feelers. Ask for some names. Ask for, for some recommendations. And you'll find one. It's good to have. Once you're around goats, you will notice all the differences between the breeds. These myotonics, Meadow and her kids here, they are said to be, uh, you can almost use them as dairy and almost use them as meat. They're sort of in between. They're not great dairy, not great meat. And you can tell the difference. This boar right here, he is a meat goat and he is just thick with muscle. His, his back legs are like, he, he's just a little young buckling and uh, it's already twice as big as Meadows here. You can tell that he's a, just, just, just solid. It's pretty awesome. So he is a definite meat goat. Okay, exciting, walking by these apple trees. You can always already see several on there. And all these trees have a bunch of them. It's, it's awesome. Here's some down here, look at this. <laughs> pretty cool, man. And all, all three of these do. This one has never really produced. Uh, we're waiting on it to mature. But it's still scraggly and I don't see one on it, so we'll see what happens with that one. The answer is, the man did exactly what he said he would do. And he wrote on the piece of paper the words, your exact weight. That's what he said he was going to write in the beginning. So he won the bet and the boy had to pay him $50. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, I want to show you something cool. We have tons of tulip trees in our yard and in the, in the woods and stuff. They're, they were here naturally when we bought the property. And I don't know if you ever wondered why they're called tulip trees. I don't know if I can get it. They have blooms on them that look just like tulips, if you can see that. And they're super cool. There's tons of them in this tree right now. I don't know if you can see them up in there. But right there's a couple. See if I can zoom in on them. Yeah, there's one. And they're really pretty. And tulip trees are just awesome. They grow fast. They provide really good shade. And as a bonus, our goats love the leaves. So if we ever trim them or anything, uh, we just give them to the goats. Right here's one that's going to open up soon. It hasn't opened up yet, but it will. It's very cool. Hey, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to continue being a part of all the adventures and stories that happen on Rubber Soul Farm. I hope we can spend more time together on the farm, but until then, enjoy your animals and take care of yourselves.